What's going on producers? This is Kobe with Sample Source back with another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how I sell beats over the phone. This is something that I don't see a lot of producers doing. I don't know any producers personally that are implementing this strategy. So I think it's an important video because you probably are not gonna get this information anywhere else on YouTube. I appreciate all the support. If you guys would like and comment and subscribe to the channel, then we'll get into the video. What's going on guys? So I think that selling beats over the phone is really slept on strategy. I know most producers are gonna write it off, especially because they might come up with excuses and say something like, I'm introverted. I don't wanna sell beats over the phone because I'm not good at speaking in person to people. So those are both valid reasons until you realize that I am both of those things. I'm not very good at speaking over the phone. I'm actually very introverted. So it was hard for me to come up with the strategy. Um, and if you've been watching my channel for some time, you know that I use voice messages as my primary primary method of driving cold traffic to my brand and uh, to get sales eventually. But what I want to talk about in today's video is why you should be utilizing the phone as a good method of driving sales to your beats. So in sales, if you're not familiar, there's a process of getting your potential customer comfortable with you, comfortable with what you have to offer and seeing if that's a solution to their problem. The way that you do this is by getting them to do what's called micro commitment. So this is important to know because before you make major decisions, especially spending $100 or more on something like a beat that is really considered um, a non-essential, they're going to have a lot of objections and you'll have to overcome these objections in order to get a sale. So this is something that is important because you want to make sure that your potential customer is very comfortable. They're trusting of you and ways to get them to trust you is having a good brand and being very good at communicating exactly what you want in a straightforward manner that addresses all the concerns. So an example of a micro commitment is getting them to message you. So you might put a post up that says you're looking for a few artists to work with. And then when they say they're interested, you can say DM me for more info. That's a micro commitment because they have to take an action in order to see what kind of information you have to give them regarding what they would have to go through to get a beat from you. So this is really good because the more micro commitments you can get your customer to make, the less likely it is for them to back out and not want to do the sale. But I know a lot of people try to get to the sale so fast, but they're not taking into account that the artist needs a lot of time in order to think things through or even want to beat from you in the first place. So this is something that's very important. You want to make sure that you are guiding them through the process. You're kind of asking them, you know, if things are okay as you're moving along and a good way to get through a lot of these quickly and uh, effectively is by using the phone. So I started using this probably about a year ago, but I never thought of it as my core strategy until recently. And it's something that I've been doing for probably the past like six months. And it's been able to drive thousands and thousands of dollars in sales. So and if you don't know, my main business model as of today is by doing custom beats. So if you don't do custom beats, it's your main business model that still works. And it's what I was doing before I was even selling a lot of custom beats. So basically my funnel or my sales funnel would be to voice message them, get to know them a little bit more. And then I would ask if they're open to getting on a call to discuss, you know, their vision for music. So that was my original funnel. I would get them onto a phone call, get their number first, schedule them for a call. And then after I get them on the call, I would ask them questions about their background in music, um, what their influences were, um, and if they're planning on releasing music in the future or anytime soon. So a lot of those questions really are icebreakers. They allow them to get comfortable with you and they see and to see you as somebody that is trustworthy and somebody that's genuinely interested in what they have to offer as an artist. So after that, I would start asking them questions about if they're releasing music anytime soon, what their needs are. Are they looking for more of a custom production or are they looking more for something that's like a type beat or something like that? So once you clarify that then you can start moving into offering a solution for them and seeing if you can add extra services they might be able to help them out even more so for my custom beats model I do something that's a lot different than most people so what I do is I offer free mixing and mastering if they buy a custom beat or an exclusive beat for me so and I'm not actually doing the mixing and mastering I outsource this to some mixing and mastering engineers that I found online and I have a relationship with and they don't charge a premium price for their service so I'm I'm able to still profit after selling the custom beat and paying the mixing and mastering engineers. So before I was doing this business model with the customs, I was just pitching my leases and I would basically tell the artists I can open up a discount. It would be a special bulk discount where they would buy one or two beats and they would get a certain amount for free. So this was working fairly well, but the problem was is 
doing all this work of doing the voice messages, all of the different messages in between, setting up a time to talk on the phone and then pitching a product to them and they end up picking only a $50 option. That's just way too much work to get $50 or $100. So what I started doing is offering custom beats and multiple exclusives and things like that. And this is working out a lot more, especially with the custom beat model. And I'm gonna tell you guys how I lined up over $3,000 of sales. Basically what I did is I went over to Twitter, I made a tweet that said I was looking for a few more artists for the month of March to work with one-on-one. -on -one, and this would be a custom beat that includes mixing and mastering. So this is important because it's using some sales strategies that you may not be familiar with, but me having studied a lot of sales and implementing a lot of these strategies, I implemented a lot of tactics and strategies that a lot of salesmen use when they're trying to acquire a customer or client. So the first one is using scarcity to sell something. So scarcity means there is a limited quantity of something available. So when I say I'm only looking for five artists to work with one-on-one -on -one for the month of March, that makes the opportunity to work with me very scarce. So that's important because a lot of artists have already might wanna work with me, but they weren't really given some kind of opportunity or something that they could take advantage of. So when they see that I say I'm looking for five artists, to work with they want to jump on that opportunity because they know there's other artists out there engaging with my posts that want to work with me already this is the power of social proof as well like if you post this on your story you're not going to get nearly as many inquiries because people can't see the social proof of all the interaction with the likes the comments the shares and stuff like that i also included a second slide with that post that said that i would be offering a zoom call where i would share my screen and you could kind of make the beat with me live so that's important because it's really is a value add to the custom beat. And the other thing it said in that was that we could jump on a quick call, discuss what they want for the project. So that's really what I say in the DMs whenever I'm talking to artists one on one about the same opportunity. So I think all of that is really important to driving sales, being open to discussing things in further detail. And this really helped for me to drive a lot of sales. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of this business model. So the first pro to it is that you're able to charge more money since it's a custom beat and they're getting it exclusively so um, that's the first pro to it the second is that you're able to fill up your schedule really quickly using this method especially if you have a large brand or a very proactive brands that you have established so that's something that important to note is that if you don't have a strong brand if you don't have a lot of artists following you or looking to work with you then this method probably won't work but i plan to do a similar post probably once every month just so i can see if there's five artists that want to lock in with me and that way it's easy to see where your initial stream of revenue is going to come from if there's more artists that want to work with me more than five at least then i'll probably end up doubling my prices eventually and that'll be another pro to this strategy is that I'm only working with a few artists, so it's gonna free up a lot of time for me to work on other things production-wise. Let's move on to the cons of this strategy. So the first one is that it's time consuming. You either have to send voice messages to artists to get them interested in your brand, or you have to make some posts to get them to engage with you. And then you have to send a lot of messages back and forth before you can get their number. Move them over to your text messages to set up a phone call and then set aside a good time to talk. And then to kind of handle that customer relationship close the sale and then set up a time to go through zoom if you're doing that same strategy as me if you're not then you still have to make the custom beat which is time consuming so if you say i don't want to do that i just want to stick with leases then that's fine that's a great strategy to use um, but this strategy is working out for me so i hope that what i'm sharing is helpful for you guys let's talk about cold traffic versus warm traffic so if you don't know what cold traffic is it's basically somebody that doesn't know anything about you that you're coming across for the first time and you're trying to turn that person into a fan and then eventually a potential customer that you can sell your products and services to so a good example of cold traffic is when you see all of these ads by these entrepreneurs and influencers that are basically saying come and join my webinar for free or get these things for free you know just join my email list type of thing so that's a good example of cold traffic they're offering something that is valuable to you free of charge just to get you in the door so another example of cold traffic is when you walk into a store and they're offering free samples of something that's something to get you interested they're offering some kind of value that is going to end up being reciprocal so in this video what i'm going to be talking about is utilizing social media platforms to drive cold traffic 
to your brand. So if you're not using these platforms, then you're basically killing potential sources of income for your brand or potential fans that you could be turning into customers. Examples of exposing your brand to cold traffic on social media are TikTok, using Reels, YouTube Shorts, basically any of those different platforms. And you can also use uh, Twitter to get retweets. You can use Instagram uh, by doing carousels of helpful posts that people can save and share. And that way it'll drive your brand to a cold audience that can come and view your profile and see if they want to follow you, if they want to be a fan of what you're putting out. YouTube is probably the best example of cold traffic because a lot of you guys are probably viewing my channel for the first time that are seeing this video. So I'm basically exposing my brand, which is sample source to a cold audience. So you can search through my channel, see if any of my content it correlates with things that you're interested in. And then maybe you'll turn into a subscriber or a fan of my work that I'm putting out. This is super important, especially as a small business because if you're not continually getting cold traffic and turning them into warm leads that eventually turn into sales then you're basically not having any more business coming in and eventually your business is going to die out most of my fan base and customers were return clients up until the last few months so i've had to start utilizing a lot of cold traffic strategies such as reels especially to drive traffic and i'm not even getting that much engagement on my reels but it still exposes me to over a thousand potential customers every single day so so that's something that I'll continue to do because it's going to generate some potential fans that can turn into customers eventually. So sending voice messages on Instagram to get potential clients is another example of cold traffic. But that's what I want to discuss in this video, because basically you're kind of chasing the customer instead of letting the customer chase you. You want to eventually get to the point where the customer is chasing you. They're trying to work with you more than you want to work with them. At that point, your product has become infinitely more valuable than it would if you're chasing down somebody because so if you go and message an artist on social media you get to know them you ask them if they're putting out new music anytime soon you're doing you're going through all the steps you're building the relationship you're building the rapport but then when you ask for the sale basically it's not as qualifying as if they were to ask you to purchase beats whenever they want to buy beats from you they may want it at a lower price since you asked them for the sale instead of them asking you. So that's important to note. And that's why I'm switching my strategy over to this method of using those tweets to drive uh, warm traffic to my DMs and to get them on a phone call to close sales. That worked really well for me. I had probably about 30 different artists DM me yesterday and ask for a custom beat for me. And I got a few of them on a phone call. And even though some of them didn't even know that I was selling a custom beat, I got a few of them to agree to pay for a custom beat. And then you want to move on to the next step, which is very important, which is getting a deposit. So whenever I set up a time where we're going to meet through Zoom, I'm going to make the beat for them live. I will let them know that I charge half up front and then half when they're satisfied with the project. This is important because you want to validate whether this person is actually interested enough to pay you because I have been burned a lot of times where I used to do a custom beat and then I would ask for payment and then they would just ghost me and they would already have the beat as well. Now I make sure that I ask for half up front and then if they're cool with that, then I will set up a time to meet through Zoom and whenever we're about to meet, I'll let them know that, hey, here's my cash app or do you want to go through PayPal to send the deposit? That way I at least have half up front and I have a commitment for from that artist and most of the time since they're already committed this is going back to using micro commitments they're going to follow through and pay the other half whenever i finish their custom beef a lot of people whenever they're trying to get extra customers they'll post something like who wants to work or let's work dm me and that really doesn't work very well because they don't know exactly what you're trying to do they don't know what your qualifying measures are and it's just not going to convert very well so a good alternative to this is by making qualifiers that that allow people to kind of do those micro commitments in their mind and see if they actually want to work with you. So a few examples of qualifiers that I use are send me some of your music so we can see if we're a good fit. This is a great qualifying question because the main thing that artists are trying to do is get people to listen to their music. Um, so this is a great way for to get them to DM you, first of all, and also send you a link to their music so you can check them out, see if they're a talented artist and if you want to work with them. So whenever you let them know you checked out their work, you like it, and you want to work with them that's a validating statement to them and it's also a qualifier so you're getting that micro commitment of getting them to qualify to work with you versus you trying to qualify yourself to work with the artist so you want to implement those three things whenever you're selling beats which is getting the artist to qualify to work with you using scarcity as a second tactic or strategy 
to sell beats. And then the third one that I have not talked about is using time as a strategy to sell more beats. So I'll probably put it up on the screen so you guys can see exactly what I posted from Twitter onto Instagram to get this many clients to work with me. So the first thing you wanna notice is that I said that I'm looking for a few more artists to work with for this particular month or for this particular time frame, And that's important because artists know that there's a deadline to work with you. So they're gonna make sure that they want to qualify to work with you before that deadline is hit. And they also have a couple other factors they're dealing with. The scarcity one we already talked about, which is that I'm only working with a few different artists. And there's also the qualifying question that I posted on the second tweet, which I'll also put up, which is send me some of your music so I can listen to it and see if we're a good fit to work. I definitely would try out some different strategies if I were you figure out what works best for you and then stick with that make a few variations and continue to test this and implement different strategies in order to see if this works but the main thing that is going to help you to sell more beats is by developing a brand that has a lot of artists that are looking for beats from you that are interested in your niche and this is going to be very important to marketing your work in general over the course of time so if you want to use my exact template for talking over the phone I included that in my beat selling guide that's in the link in the description if you guys want to check that out and see if it's something you're interested in. So I hope this video has helped you guys out and kind of given you a new way to look at things as far as selling beats, as far as different strategies of selling them. So if it's helped you out, then please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and like and comment on this video. It really helps out the channel. We're growing at a fast pace. So I really appreciate the support and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you want a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, then check out the link below to set that up. And if you want to learn how I make a living selling beats online, then check out my beat selling guide below.